Welcome to the STS 8 in 8 series. My name is Jay Powell, and I'll be presenting on LVAD implantation via thoracotomy. This schematic of the typical incisions used for a thoracotomy LVAD implant procedure. The left anterior thoracotomy is pretty consistently in the inframammary crease. The outflow graft anastomosis can be performed through an upper hemisternotomy or a right anterior thoracotomy for a truly sternal sparing technique. The general strategy I use for thoracotomy implants is shown here. I found that most patients can be implanted via this technique. If a patient needs an aortic valve procedure, this can be performed through these incisions as well. Some surgeons will also address the tricuspid valve through an upper hemisternotomy, but I find that it requires such an extended incision that it obviates some of the benefits of the thoracotomy approach. I used to obtain a chest CT in every patient, but have gone away from that with experience. Knowing the location of the ascending aorta can certainly be helpful in planning a right anterior thoracotomy or hemisternotomy, but I found that you can usually make either incision work. There are advantages with an upper hemisternotomy in terms of exposure, but the right upper thoracotomy makes a subsequent transplant procedure easier by leaving the sternum completely intact. I use an ultrasound to find the LV apex and make a limited left anterior thoracotomy based on the ultrasound findings. I cannulate the groin percutaneously using pre-closure devices and do so after exposing the aorta and LV apex. Some surgeons try to limit cardiopulmonary bypass time or even avoid it altogether, but I find that this makes the operation easier and ultrafiltration during cardiopulmonary bypass can have some beneficial effects as well. Once on bypass, I core the apex before completing the sewing ring anastomosis. This allows complete decompression of the LV and for easier manipulation prior to placing the sewing ring. My routine has been to place two sutures to secure the ring to the apex, core the ventricle, and then place a weighted pump sucker in the ventricle. The apex can then be more easily manipulated so I can run a 3 0 proline suture to make it hemostatic. I also tunnel the driveline and outflow graft in the pericardium to make the subsequent sternotomy easier and safer, and to place the driveline and outflow graft in the same location as if the implant was via a sternotomy. Here are two pictures of a bilateral thoracotomy approach for an LVAD implant. You can see from the lower picture that the surgeon with the headlight has an excellent view of the LV apex. In fact, one of the advantages of this approach is that the operating surgeon has a good view of the apex in situ and coaxial to the long axis of the ventricle. This allows for appropriate position of the LVAD as well as good visualization of the sewing ring in the event there is bleeding. Here are some close-ups of the sewing ring. I do orient the pin of the hardware h bed so it's pointed towards the medial aspect of the incision. In these pictures, pledgeted sutures are used to secure the sewing ring, but I've gone to running a proline suture as I find that faster and more hemostatic. Each of these conditions pose technical challenges, but with experience are doable. A short or leftward aorta is more easily exposed through an upper hemisternotomy but if you choose to do a right thoracotomy, you can usually pull the aorta far enough over with enough pericardial retraction sutures. Reoperative cardiac surgery is another challenge. I used to avoid patients with patent lima grafts, but now feel that I can navigate around it safely. Mediastinal adhesions can often be mobilized from the posterior sternum along the acute margin of the heart. Thoracotomy implantation is particularly suited for patients who've had previous cardiac surgery because most of the adhesions do not need to be mobilized. Only a small area at the LV apex that is directly under the incision and a tunnel for the outflow graft need to be created. I find this much easier and quicker than a reduced sternotomy. This approach is so reproducible that we haven't needed to convert to a sternotomy for exposure. In addition, the incisions are well suited to intercostal blocks, especially if a bithoracotomy approach is used, so pain control is superior to a sternotomy. And since the incisions are interior, they do not interfere with the respiratory mechanics as a posterolateral thoracotomy can, and even patients with marginal lung function tolerate the procedure well. Positioning of the outflow graft along the diaphragm and right side of the heart is straightforward from the thoracotomy approach. There are numerous benefits to this procedure. The apical component of the implant procedure is simpler because the heart is not lifted out of the chest as it is for a sternotomy. This makes pump positioning more consistent and reliable. Furthermore, apical bleeding is readily addressed since the entire sewing ring is still visible once the heart and LVAD are in the final position. The lateral trial demonstrated lower incidence of right heart dysfunction in patients implanted via thoracotomy. This has been consistent with other smaller reports. Those patients who are subsequently undergoing heart transplantation, 
the reentry sternotomy is considerably easier. There's certainly a learning curve to any new procedure, but most cardiac surgeons can rapidly include this technique into their skill set. Few pointers that I've picked up along the way include making the incisions larger than initially expected. This allows for greater visualization and allows the surgeon to become comfortable with the intracorporeal portion of the operation without being limited by small incisions. With practice, however, the incisions can be reduced to less than 10 centimeters with good results. All currently approved LVAS include cardiopulmonary bypass in the IFU. Furthermore, this facilitates mobilization of the apex resection of any trabeculations or ventricular thrombi, and allows for better de-airing maneuvers. I prefer to tunnel the driveline within the pericardium so that it has a similar course as if the implant was via sternotomy. This allows for easier re-entry for transplant and for exchange if necessary. Shortening or eliminating the strain relief can facilitate placement of the LVAD through smaller left-sided incisions. And lastly, I close or reconstruct the pericardium to prevent adhesions to the lung. In summary, the thoracotomy technique is readily learned and a valuable addition to the cardiac surgeon's armamentarium. Thank you.